Welcome back. In the last video, you saw LSTM and its architecture. We also saw in the previous videos simplified GRU and GRU. Now remember that all these were meant to handle the vanishing gradient issue. Now the question is why is it that GRU and LSTM work? Okay. So in this video, we will give you a very, very short and very heuristic um, explanation. The mathematics of this as far as I understand has not yet been totally worked out. So this is basically guesswork. Uh, initial guess behind LSTMs was based more on cognition rather than any direct mathematical reason. Um, but I will try and give you a short heuristic for why this works. So remember that when we had simplified GRU, our expression was HT is some nonlinearity. Let me use an alternate expression. It was actually f times h t minus 1 plus 1 minus f times g, where g was our tan h of z g. Okay. Now, this was the expression that we used. Now, how does this help the vanishing gradient issue? Now, remember why was it that the gradient was vanishing uh, in the first place? Remember, you can sort of think of this as if this is a weight matrix and if this weight matrix multiplies with itself multiple times through multiple layers, your eigenvalue when it is raised to the power n and if it is less than 1, it can actually go to 0. That was the basic problem. When this is when this goes to w n, it went like lambda power n as I explained in the uh, gradients video. Now, how does this term help? Notice that when this is w, this vector or this matrix can be approximated as if it is the identity matrix minus w. If this goes as w, again remember all this is very heuristic. If this goes as w, that becomes i minus w. So, if this number is small, this becomes correspondingly large. If this is 0 0.01, that becomes 0 0.99. So, in some sense, this term and that term balance out. More importantly, this plus is what makes things work. Why does this plus make things work? Because you can now visualize this as if you might recall this from Dr. Ganapati's videos. This is nothing but the architecture of ResNet. And there, whether it was ResNet or whether it was AlexNet and several other cases, you actually saw that there is an alternate pathway. for the gradient. That is, when you are doing back prop, it can either go directly through this or it can go through this. Okay. So, similarly, when you offer, remember when we were doing LSTM, we had one pathway through H t minus 1, we had another pathway and this was the reason why we drew the figure through CT. Okay. So, this alternate pathway for the gradient actually helps you. Again, this is a very heuristic explanation. Whenever you actually provide alternate pathways, especially jumps from the end to the beginning, if you actually jump a few layers okay, one way or the other or you provide different paths as was pro provided in AlexNet through different GPUs, when you do that, it typically sort of mitigates gradient problems. So, this is a general theme that you will see across this course. So, this is a good lesson to learn, you know, sort of a heuristic lesson to learn. Whenever you have training problems, try and provide alternate pathways, okay. try and provide some skip connections, try and provide some different ways to actually train and that is really what as we understand it, uh, what happens even within simplified GRU or within LSTM because of alternate ways or mathematically because this f sort of balances out the 1 minus f or the i gate in terms of LSTM, it actually gives you different ways to train the gradient and the gradient goes longer before vanishing. Thank you. Mm -hmm.